Hey guys. <clears throat> hey guys, so I quickly wanted to share with you something that I've been working on. Um, it's a uh, software, a Mac application to control DCC, specifically NCE PowerCab version 1.65. And so um, some backstory, I created this home office as you can see in the GoPro. Um, if you're not familiar with GoPro, it's a uh, fish-eyed lens, so it's very wide. So if it looks distorted, that's because it's the GoPro. So I have the home office, and so I have a, essentially it's a shelf layout, it's drywall, hollow, so it has electrical running through it, low voltage electrical. Um, I have two tracks, um, a forward and a rear. The rear is elevated a little bit, about three quarters of an inch. And then I have some um, kind of custom cutout uh, corner pieces uh, that we did on a CNC machine. It's MDF painted. Uh, you know, it turned out pretty well. And so as far as the train, um, right now I have two up there. I have both um, MTH, DCC, DCS, um, and I'm using DCC in the office. And so I've used DCS for all my other trains. I have all MTH trains. Um, I have, you know, the TIU and all that. But for this, I decided to go with DCC because I knew I wanted to write my own software. And DCC is an open standard and they publish, um, you know, a lot of the information on how to control the trains and commands and, and all that. So I went with DCC and like I said, I have the power cab uh, version 1.65 from MC NCE and that's powering this whole thing. And, and then in addition to the power cab, I have the NC USB adapter, which you need to connect a computer to the power cab. Essentially it's a USB to serial connection um, and allows you to tr transmit serial data to the power cab. And so I initially installed JRMI um, it's a great program. It does a lot more than my application. You know, you can program CVVs and control trains. Um, and so, you know, for 90% of the time, it was overkill for what I needed. So I just wanted to write my own software that could control the trains in a, in a kind of, uh, you know, in my own style, in my in my own preference. And so the first thing my application is, you know, notice there's no dock icon. Um, I built it as a status bar icon uh, or just status bar app. And so if you don't know what that is, like Dropbox is a status bar app. Um, it's very self-contained, uh, lifts up on the top. And so um, here are these cross bugs. This is my application. I'll tap it. You'll see that it opens up this nice little panel. It's very uh, sim simple. You know, there's not too much. And that's kind of what I was going for. Like I said, it is a native Mac application. You don't need um, Java to run this. It'll run right on your computer. And it uses all the kind of modern uh, Mac design, transparencies, translucencies, uh, etc. And so you'll see I have simple setup, so serial port. So we're going to say the NC power cap, which is the USB adapter. Um, the serial port is, you know, the connect, like the connect to USB adapter. And then the baud rate is uh, 19200. And so this is all the configuration you need uh, to get going. And so uh, this configuration is based off the board and the board has jumper settings and the jumper settings are based on the you know version of power cab you have uh, software running on the power cab etc and that's all kind of denoted in the documentation that comes with it so this, these are the settings that work uh, with my setup and so i'll hit connect and so this actually establishes the serial connection with the board and so you'll see it's green so we, that's uh, connection uh, was successful and then this new becomes active and so new um, is a control panel Control panel is very similar to a throttle on JRMI, and then Bluetooth below spinning, which I'll talk about later. So if I go to new, this creates a new throttle window. It always defaults to three, the DCC to fall off three. Um, you'll see again, transparency, very simple. Um, it looks really nice. We have this um, kind of display at the top, which is the current uh, train name, the current short address or long address, depending on the train. Uh, the speed and then you have quick actions for headlight bell and horn and then all the kind of dcc functions generic speed control eat uh, the emergency stop forward and reverse and then a console at the bottom to kind of see what commands are being sent and the status of the uh, serial port and so the first thing i wanted to do was i wanted to be able to see what the actual functions were so i built in this um program or not program but this function to actually pick uh, a metadata file and so i have this um, plist file which stores all the data for my up1995 so it's an actual short address which this one is three um, just to keep it simple and then all the names of the function so actually uh, the actual names so instead of referencing a manual while you're sitting here you actually have the names of the functions 
And so um, this is the train in the rear, so I'm just gonna start this one up quickly and shut it down, just so you can see. So, NC, sometimes you have to hit the, uh, start up twice, so the train is starting up. I can hit the horn, headlight, you know, bell. And then I'm gonna shut it down. That's the train in the back. And then the train that I'm actually gonna have to go around the room is the train in the front. So you'll see I need to create a new throttle. So that creates a new window. I need to go in and load the data file for the other train. And so it loads all that in. You'll see it's on four. Uh, shorter is four. And so I'm gonna start that up. And so it's got a cool startup because it's the dash nine. So you can see it's starting up. It's the extended startup, so it's going to take a second. Turn on the lights. Toggle the bell. Hit the horn. Got a very cool horn. And then I'll start up the speed. And then I'll shut it down. And again, extended shutdown, so it'll take a second. So instead of talking over it, I'll just wait for it to finish. And so it's shutting down. And so yeah, you saw I seamlessly kind of ran that train, controlled it, everything worked pretty well. And then so the other function I wanted to build in um, was the ability to have programs, right? So MTH has like these kind of cool automation programs. And so uh, in that plist file, metadata file, um, you can build a program. But essentially, it's a sequence of functions being called, um, separated by time. And so I'm going to run this one. This, this program is pretty simplistic. It was for, for beta, for de development. So I think it turns on the train, um, moves it forward a little bit, and then stops it. So it's just a quick, so I'm going to hit run. So you'll see the train starting up. And then if you look down here, you'll see the commands getting fired. So the train's going to start moving in a second because it's going to call the speed command. So you can see the speed move. I left it in reverse though, so it's going backwards. And then you see it stopped. I'm going to bring the train back to Oh, the train's shutting down, that's right. So that program shuts down the train, so that's why the speed stop part. So the train's shutting down. So I'm still working out some of the kinks um, with the with the automation. And so the train shut down. And so I'm gonna start it back up just so I can put the train back in its right position. And then I'm shutting down the train again. All right. And yeah, so now I want to talk about the uh, Bluetooth that I mentioned before. So you see I open up my 
my panel again. Bluetooth is still spinning. And so I'm going to actually open up uh, my phone. So I'm going to go back to QuickTime, go to new movie recording. And so this is actually going to be my phone. So let me, iTunes popped up. And so here's my phone. You can see this is you know, live, it's actually running. I'm going to move this over here. So if I go back to this panel and Bluetooth is spinning, if I open up this Control iOS app, so this is an app that I built um, for on iOS, and so you see it turned green uh, on the phone because it's seamlessly connected to uh, the application. So you'll see I have my name here in green, so this is my phone that it connected to, and so now there's a connection between the phone and the application. I didn't have to type anything in, I didn't have to do anything fancy, it automatically connects. And it's the same thing for an iPad uh, and additional iPhones. And so you'll see uh, my iPhone says no active window, and this is by design. It's because these two windows are kind of background right now, the two control windows and this uh, screen sharing window is in the front. And so um, why it's like that is because the phone essentially is just an extension of the command window. And so um, it essentially just controls the current command window. So you'll see if I go to back to UP95, now my phone is actually in a uh, control state, right? And so um, essentially the phone is not really sending any data packets through serial. The phone is, is uh, just telling uh, this window what UI was hit. And then this window essentially is, is responsible for sending the data packets to the, uh, uh, to the serial. So it's, and it's, I think it's much like adding another cab uh, to the NCE system. And so the main cab is you know, like the brain, and then the secondary cab sends the commands. It's, it's, it's similar to that, where this window is the brain, and the phone essentially is just a sending, um, you know, not necessarily commands, but kind of signals to the, the brain to then send the commands. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the way I programmed it, and that's the way I like it, and, and it works really well, and it's, you know, the uh, app is lightweight, and it's super fast. And so you'll see if I switch between uh, the two windows, the phone changes. So I'm, cause, because I'm changing the active state of the windows and the, the phone controls the active window, the phone changes um, quickly. So this is all happening uh, via Bluetooth, uh, uh, back and forth data, and it's very quick. So I have the Dash 9 selected, and then on my phone, you'll see I have a lot of the same things that the control panels have, right? I have the display on the top, I have the quick, um, the quick buttons, headlight, bell, horn, and then all the DCC functions, increase speed, uh, reverse, forward, etc. cetera, uh, emergency stop. So a few things you'll notice that are different are the functions don't have names, and that's because I'm using the Bluetooth and I want it to be quick, so I don't want to send too, too large of data over. Um, this could be accomplished, uh, but for this particular point in time, I just uh, was focused on speed, and, and so I didn't transmit the function names over. And then the speed, instead of using a slider, I'm using an up and down. Um, and that's more for safety because of the Bluetooth commands. If something gets lost in trans transmission, it's only an in integer of one or negative or plus one. Uh, and so you can't really get too crazy. Um, I can change that to a slider at some point and just write some more code. So um, I'll demonstrate on the phone where I'm going to hit F3. So that's starting up the engine. You'll see. And then F0 is the headlight, F5 is the other light, so you'll see those lights are on. We're in forward, and so I'm going to increase the speed to the train starting to go. Horn, everything works. Bell. And you stop. Reverse. Then I'm going to shut it down. So then that train's shutting down, and just to prove that it works the way I said it works, I'm going to switch over here. And I'm going to start up the UP1995. So you can hear UP1995 starting up now in the background. The form, and then I'm gonna shut it down. So, pretty cool. Um, now I'm gonna switch over 